What is going on everyone? Dark Seam here. And today I will be going over Black Ops 3's patch that recently came out, patch 1.04. There are a ton of things in this patch note. It pretty much accumulates all the hot fixes and changes to the game that have come out since the game launched. But I will only be going over the black market weapons and score streaks within this video because I feel like those are the more important things or the meat and potatoes of the game. And I will only be going over the PlayStation 4 notes. First off, for the black market, they have added a new feature called Burn Duplicates. Players are able to burn all duplicate black market contraband in exchange for crypto keys. More crypto keys are rewarded for exchanging duplicates of higher rarities. This is one of the most awesome additions, I feel like, to the black market, seeing as it was one of the requested features that I wanted and a lot of other people wanted. And finally, being able to burn through duplicates that you don't ever really use. Also on the list with the black market, the rare supply drop has seen some tuning. So as always, rare supply drops guarantee at least one rare or better item. But now opening a rare supply drop now has a slightly better odd of receiving a legendary and epic item than the equivalent of opening three common supply drops. You're also now guaranteed to receive a bonus reward with each rare supply drop. And it also guarantees at least one item related to specialists or weapons. And one of the last things that I think was very important for the black market is the addition of new melee weapons. The butterfly knife, the wrench, and brass knuckles. This is really cool to see. I think this is kind of more the fun side of the black market and seeing what type of items and weapons that we can get. And seeing as you can run around and kill people in one hit with a wrench, I think is pretty funny and kind of a good way to start introducing new items into Black Ops 3. Now moving into the general increases for the game. XP earn rate has been increased for Team Deathmatch, Search and Destroy, Capture the Flag, Safeguard, Demolition, and Free For All. They have also increased the rate at which Crypto Keys are earned, and this is a nice addition, seeing as more people are going to want to buy more rare supply drops now more than ever and with the addition of microtransactions of a new currency to use on supply drops, the increase rate in crypto keys is nice to see. The game has also seen multiple fixes and tweaks for free-for-all and gun games specifically in regards to spawns, match in progress, and more. So if you guys want to read all of the patch notes, I will be linking you guys in the description below so you guys can check out every single thing that is on the list. Now moving on to the final list, weapons and score streaks. With the submachine guns, the Cuda, the Weevil, and the Razorback have all seen an increase in recoil control. Seeing as the submachine guns are actually very fun to use in this game, the increased recoil control seems like some of the weapons were being outclassed at medium range, but that is just my opinion. We'll see where that goes, but it is a nice addition to see these weapons getting buffed. The Weevil, I feel, needs a little bit more love, but it is one step in the right direction. The Razorback has also seen an increase in damage range, and this is quite interesting. The Razorback is one of the best SMGs in regards to its range, but it seems like it's still being outclassed to the submachine gun. I'm not sure what this increase in damage range is for, but it's definitely not for combating against other submachine guns up close. Either way, I guess it's a buff, so we'll move on. The Vesper has received a reduced damage range, seeing as the Vesper was actually a really good weapon and you could actually get some decent kills at long range, the reduced in damage range is kind of let down because it was a very fun weapon to use. Either way, it's being tuned and balanced out, so it is welcome. The VMP received a reduction to its aim down sight speed and also reduced its hit fire accuracy. Seeing as the VMP has one of the highest uh, behind the Weevil, in regards to its clip, the VMP being nerfed may seem like a hindrance, but in reality, we have no real numbers here, so we really won't know if it will make a difference in how the VMP is used. Moving on to the assault rifles, the KN44, the HVK30, and the ICR1, and finally, the Man of War have all seen an increase in recoil control. It seems like recoil control is something that they were really aiming for for a few of these weapons within the game, and recoil may not have been the issue here, but in reality, it was something that was behind the scenes and maybe they noticed that people were not hitting as many of their shots as they should be. So the recoil control will ultimately be a good addition for all these weapons, specifically the KN44. I know that recoil 
was a big hindrance to using that weapon. Now hopefully it is more useful. Moving back to the ICR-1, this weapon has received a reduction to its hipfire accuracy. The XR-2 has seen a reduced movement speed. Not much to say here. The XR-2 may have been a really good weapon to use and having stock on it, maybe that was one of the issues that it was having. So with reduced movement speed, this will make stock less powerful, but overall reduced movement speed. I don't think that will be a big nerf to the XR-2. And last but not least on the list, the M8 has seen a reduced fire rate. One of the biggest things about the M8 was that the fire rate was really good. So when you shot one burst, all your shots would hit and connect. And most of the times you could actually one burst people. So seeing the reduced fire rate will fine tune the M8. But in reality, if you still wanted to one burst people, you can slap on rapid fire and still have the same effect. Maybe a little bit more recoil, but the M8 has not seen any recoil problems that I've seen so far. Moving on to the shotguns. The shotguns have seen some love this patch. The KRM has specifically received an increase in damage and it will now be a maximum of, of a two shot kill. The 205 Brecky has seen an increase in damage range and the Haymaker 12 has seen an increase in damage range as well. Not too much of a shotgun user, so I can't really say much about these weapons. Either way, I think we will be seeing shotguns a little bit more frequently with this patch. For light machine guns, very small list. The Dingo has seen an increase in movement speed while firing the weapon, an increase in recoil control, and the 48 Dredge has seen a reduced fire rate. So some nice additions. The 48 Dredge seems like it's getting a little bit more of a balance. Sure, it's a nerf, but it is being balanced as a weapon. And the Dingo, I feel like was one of the strongest light machine guns and now it is seeing a little bit of a buff. Kind of interesting, but we'll see where that weapon ends up after this patch. For the pistols, the MR6, the RK5, and the LKAR9 have all received an increase in movement speed. And I don't really know if that was an issue with the, with the pistols. They were actually really good to use, really fun to use, but maybe the movement speed is when you're aiming down the sight. So now you'll have a little bit more of movement when you're aiming down the sight with these weapons. Either way, good addition. The RK5 pistol has also seen a reduced damage range. So I'm guessing that the RK5 was, the RK5 was a little too good at close range and medium range. So now they are reducing it. So medium range isn't as reliable with the RK5. And either way, the RK5 clip is very small. So we'll see if that is a big hindrance or not. And last on the list, the LKAR-9 has also received a reduction in damage and reduced hip fire accuracy. Kind of straightforward there. Seems like people were using it and hip firing and using its damage to get one kill and trying to keep themselves alive with it. Now moving on to the attachments, the suppressor has seen an increase in damage range. So it seems like the suppressor will see a little bit more of use with this buff. The laser sight has also seen an increase in hip fire accuracy on assault rifles and light machine guns. So it seems like the ICR-1 may have been a little too good with laser sight, but now with ICR-1 being nerfed with its hit fire accuracy, maybe we'll see laser sight a little bit more to use the weapon that well. Fast mags has seen an increase in reload speed. Rapid fire has changed to increase the fire rate and not the burst delay on burst weapons. So like I said earlier, you can slap on rapid fire, post patch, and you will still get the one shot burst on the M8. And dual wielding has seen a reduction in movement speed and a reduction in switch weapon speed. Not sure if dual wielding was a big problem, but it seems like it was a little too strong. So like I stated many times before, looks like this patch is balancing things a lot. For equipment, the concussion grenade has seen reduced stun time. Very good to see, and hopefully people will start getting a few more kills even when they are stunned. For perks, overclock has seen an increase in earn rate. Anti-up has seen an increase in starting bonus towards score streaks. And Hardwire has seen an increase in effectiveness against enemies who, who have the 6th sense perk equipped. And last but not least on this list, moving on to the score streaks. So in general, for, for all aerial score streaks, these score streaks must be within a minimum distance from the map before locking onto them with a launcher. So for those who are launcher happy like I am, you will not be able to aim down and lock onto a UAV or counter UAV while it's flying in. That is all I have for you guys as far as what has changed in this reason patch for Black Ops 3. Like I said, there are a ton of things to still read into, and that is only the multiplayer aspect of the game. So if you guys want to read in other aspects of the game like zombies, like I stated earlier, I will have the link 
in the description below. And what do you guys think about the specifics of the patch notes? So far, we've seen a nice little list. Like I said earlier, it's a nice long list, but at the same time, we're not getting specifics on what has changed. We've only just gotten the little sentence, AKA the CUDA has seen an increase in recoil control, but there is no real fine number to tell us that it has reduced recoil control by 20%, 10%, 15%. So we actually don't know if the buff or nerf is even worth it or if it will even affect the weapon that much. Either way, like I said, it's nice to get a list out. But let me know what you guys think. I'll leave you guys with that question. And as always, I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys next time.